Day 13, Cable Tracer Transmitter. This is to match yesterday, Day 12's um, Christmas Light Bulb Detector or Cable Tracing Receiver. It's a very simple circuit, uh, two oscillators with my favourite complementary pair trick. Um, this one's fairly low frequency which is actually used to control the transition point of this complementary pair. So essentially this sets an envelope of the um, the voltage to which this em emitter is allowed to rise before the whole system triggers and recharges the capacitor and uh, I needed an emitter follower to buffer the, uh, the you know the relatively high impedance I don't want to pull too much current out of this part of the circuit because it's being fed you see 1 meg 5 is fairly small current being injected into that capacitor um, and the rest of it's really just uh, you know, pretty basic protection. These diodes, 1 in 4 uh, 007 thousand volt diodes, are, are there purely to protect uh, the circuit from if you connect it to something nasty. This 15 nano capacitor should be a kilovolt capacitor if you've got one. Um, you know, strictly you don't need these if you're just building it for uh, a quick hack to, to trace your Christmas lights if you're not plugging them into the mains, but if you're building it for uh, comms wiring tracing, then you, you probably want to add these just as a, a safety feature to, to stop um, you know, high voltages blowing up your device and possibly blowing you up. What you might want to do if you want to drive long pieces of wire, however, is to use a, some better output stage. And I might uh, might write a bit more documentation about that when I write up this uh, this particular article. So maybe a totem pole output that can uh, that can drive a fair bit of current into a low impedance line if it's fairly long or high capacitance or bossy. Alrighty. Um, yeah, it's five transistors. It looks scary, but uh, really it's these two are essentially identical, and this is just a buffer, so it's it's you know, very, very easy to put together. I haven't bothered to build a, a proper soldered version of it. I ran out of time tonight, but I do have it here on the uh, solderless breadboard, working quite well. Yeah. This is yesterday's receiver. You can hear. Suitably annoying, kind of like a drunk bird or something sound. Uh, you can fiddle with the component values a little bit if you prefer uh, slightly higher or slightly lower pitch tweeting, but uh, it's not particularly critical, but you don't want to go too high in frequency or else um, the you know, it essentially be, starts becoming RF and it's a bit more of a problem if you've got long transmission lines and also it's um, Likely to hop between wires. The higher, you know, the crosstalk between the wires increases with the in, with increasing frequency. But uh, on most modern cables, that's not a massive issue. Telephone lines might be a bit of a problem. Uh, also, yeah, it's probably not even remotely legal to connect one of these things to the actual telephones network, but people do it all the time. Uh, okay, Christmas light wise, it's even better than using the hum. Here's the Christmas lights we have with the same defective bulb. Yeah. Pretty obvious where the break is. You can see it's pretty much ideal for the job. So uh, yeah, quick, simple little circuit. I'll probably build it into a you know a little square of board. It runs off nine volts and it pulls 270 microamps. So it's not going to kill the battery very quickly. You can uh, probably leave it on for a few hours and uh, it wouldn't really hurt the battery too much. You, you might want to build it uh, in such a way that uh, you use a, say, a, say a stereo uh, headphone connector and you use the, uh, the sleeve as, uh, with, with a mono plug. That, so when you push the mono plug into the connector, it turns on the battery. That might be one useful way of uh, conserving battery life. Alternatively, you can just have a switch um, or just replace the battery every time you, every now and then. But uh, another choice I suppose would be to build it on, like many of my other projects here, 9 volt battery toppers that you just stick on top of the 9 volt battery when you need it. Uh, output choice connector, wire, uh, connector choice wise, I'd say probably alligator clips and a selection of patch leads that uh, you know plug into to, um, Cat5 and um, normal telephone connectors, that kind of thing, it's kind of useful. Mains wise, the alligator clips work fine. I mean right now, I've just as you can see here, I've just got the alligator clips on the end of the plug. That's working pretty well for me. Um, you don't want to leave the other pair float. You, you definitely want to hook them up as a pair. Uh, and another alternative might be to actually use a transformer here to drive it, but 
that might actually defeat the purpose of the, the testing. Anyway, a bit more, some experiments for you to play around with, but uh, traditionally I've seen other circuits that use a pair of triple fives to do this. Um, you could use the triple fives if you like, but this is uh, simple and cheap. Seems to do the job. It's a little bit finicky about uh, about resistor values, so you don't want to stray too far from this because there's these are very simple complementary pair setups. There's no nothing to um, change the bias point when they so if they pull too much current, they act like an SCR and they'll slam on and stay on. Which so you've got to be a little bit careful about um, the values. That's why these resistor values are fairly small. It's not such a big issue for the uh, the tone oscillator, the interval or enveloping oscillator. Uh, it, it is fairly critical. And if you reduce this value much below 500k or so, it'll probably saturate and stick on. Because this thing's uh, set point's being ramped up and down by the, the voltage on this capacitor, it's not such a big deal for, the, for this. And it will eventually reset the SCR if it does uh, latch on. Waveform-wise, you can see the waveform there. Blue trace is the interval or um, enveloping oscillator, and the yellow trace is the, the output from the, from the uh, tone oscillator seems to do the job. It's, it's just basically a chirped um, triangle wave, you know, roughly sawtooth wave being chirped by another sawtooth. They're not linear in the, you know, I never bothered to build proper current sources if you want them to be perfectly linear so it sounds better or something you can, but um, they're just uh, normal first order kind of waves. Alrighty, uh, yep, this is meant to be a quick one. It's going on for seven minutes now, so tomorrow, hmm, don't know, maybe some more RF stuff. Uh, RF stuff seems to be pretty popular. If you've, uh, if you've got anything you'd like me to, to have a go at, uh, time is obviously going to be a bit of a problem, but for the, um, for the weekends where we have a bit more time, and there's not too many weekends left, we can uh, have a go at some more complicated projects. Uh, as always, comment please, and uh, email me if you, you don't want to put a comment here on YouTube. Happy to uh, have a chat about anything you like. Uh, some people have been asking for kits for some of these projects. We, we might do that. Uh, I'll have to look at the, you know, how, how many people would actually want it to make it worthwhile getting boards made up. But uh, for the most part, the really cool thing about all of these very simple circuits is that you can uh, build them yourself, you know, just dead bug or uh, on a little bit of circuit board or whatever. But certainly kits do make it a lot easier to, uh, to build stuff and I, I know myself quite often I buy stuff because I'm just being lazy rather than actually uh, bothering to come up with a layout on perf board or something. Alrighty, till tomorrow, bye.